everybody is hoping that it will keep it that way. Jill, thank you very much. Jill Dummigan there. Now, Rosie Larkin was just five when she died from cancer. For the last 30 years, Rosie's parents have raised millions of pounds in her memory to fund research into the disease. And now, scientists at the University of Manchester have made a major breakthrough because of Rosie's legacy. Abby Jones reports. She had an animation and the love of life about her that was extraordinary. It was like falling into a black hole. You're in a dream when you're falling and there's nothing to hang on to. There's nothing to grab hold of. This was Lisa Larkin talking about her daughter Rosie's diagnosis shortly after her death in 1991. She passed away two days before her sixth birthday. In that interview, amidst the grief and devastation, her mum also voiced a hope and determination for the future. I just feel cancer is a disease like any other and that it is within our remit to be able to cure it. And I would just like to see a situation where no more parents need to sit in front of a doctor and be told, we can't cure your child. I think we can do better than that. We have done better. We've still got a long way to go, but we've done better. 30 years on, in the back garden of her home in Cheshire, Lisa says she now has cautious hope. Research part funded by her charity Friends of Rosie has found a potential new way to treat bone cancer in children. I'm delighted that there's been a major breakthrough because that's why we set it up, is to change the face of children's cancer, which was neglected and to a certain extent still is. Of course, during the 11 months that Rosie was treated, we met a lot of families and a lot of children. I particularly remember the ones who didn't make it. And I thought, we can't abandon all these children. They're just as important as, as Rosie was. Scientists have identified a set of key genes that cause bone cancer to spread to the lungs. It's very early days, but the hope is the research could save more lives and lead to kinder treatment than the gruelling chemotherapy it's now treated with. Hi Madison, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. you? Madison from Trafford is 15. <laughs> she rang the bell at the end of chemotherapy to treat her bone cancer, but is now having more after a relapse. She knows how tough current treatment can be. It'd be amazing if there was a way to avoid all this chemotherapy and having to go through all of this. It was like very hard. Like I was throwing up all the time and um, I was like really ill with it. Friends of Rosie has now helped fund 27 projects into cancer research, but Lisa says there's much more still to be done. They're our future, our children, and we, we, ought to, we ought to still do better. If they were marking my homework, it would be a tick, but can do better. Abby Jones, BBC Northwest Tonight. What a wonderful legacy. The research team at the University of Manchester is led by Dr Catherine Finnegan. I asked her why it's taken 40 years to make this breakthrough. There's several layers to that. Um, there's bone cancer itself is fairly underfunded, so there's not many of us working on it. Um, it's, a, it's a rare cancer and we derive our results from um, things that patients donate to us, so parts of their tumour and other things that allow us to find this. This is how we found these findings. Um, so we're fortunate that it's infrequent that, that patients get osteosarcoma, uh, but that does mean there's um, a rarity of material to do our testing with as well. And just in layman's terms, if you can, just explain exactly what you've discovered and what that means. OK, so um, one of the main things and one of the main problems with osteosarcoma that makes it a bit harder to treat is when it's spread from the bone where it starts into the lung. Unfortunately, that's relatively common um, and that's very much harder to treat. So what we found is we found the sort of the why, what's going on inside the... The, the bone tumour that means that it's gone to the lungs. And by doing that, we found a way to, to stop that from happening. And if all goes according to plan, which hopefully it will, how far off are you being able to actually use this on children who are desperately poorly? 
Um, I would, to be realistic, I would say it's at least five years. We have to do the, the trials in people. We have to do, obviously, all the adequate um, extra experiments and safety checks that are required. And you've been funded in part by the Friends of Rosie, the charity set up in, in Rosie's memory. What was it like when you picked up the phone and rang them and told them? It was good. It's, it's a great, great occasion to do something like that. When you can tell people that that the money that they've spent such a long time trying to, you know, get people to, to donate to them and all the fundraising and hard work that we've used that and we've used that to great effect. It's a wonderful feeling. I'm very proud of us. I'm very proud of them. Their tenacity is the reason why we're where, where we are now. That's the reason we've made this breakthrough is because of them never, never giving up. And as yeah. we saw with Rosie, when she went through her treatment all those years ago, the same treatment that children are having today, yeah. this is a horribly aggressive form of treatment for a child to it's have to go through. It's gruelling. It's absolutely gruelling. Yeah, um, often, you know, there can be limb amputation as well as the awful gruelling chemotherapy. So one other aspect of the treatment that we found is not only will it help with that spread, but also it's a kinder treatment. Um, it's going to be more specific, so it means those some of those sort of terrible side effects are less likely to happen. And in terms of a, a scale of 1 to 10, I mean, how confident are you that you think this will make it all the way through in, in a few years' time? You put me on the spot there. I mean, I am always an optimist, so I'd like to say 10, but there are, there, to be realistic, there are hurdles that do stop these kind of findings getting completely through. Um, but I'm going to remain optimistic. I'm going to push it. Finnegan, we wish you well. Thank you so much for talking to us and many congratulations. Thank you very much. We've got our fingers crossed.